Hello, Dress for Success. My name is Jennifer Tomei, and I am a Client Success Manager with Experian Partner Solutions. My job is to help build lasting and valuable relationships and align our partners uh, with our products and services that would help best them engage, retain, and monetize their customers with credit education, and identity theft protection solutions. I've been with Experian for just about a year. However, my journey began quite a while ago in a completely different industry, insurance to be specific, <clears throat> very different than working for a credit bureau. I was successful in the insurance industry. I managed territories, worked with organizations to build their book of business. And to be honest, I was quite happy in that field. However, life had other plans for me, and as scary as it was, I stepped away from a 15-year career to try something new. Let me tell you, it really took some time, and it wasn't easy, but it was really worth it. I refreshed my resume and my LinkedIn profile, started connecting with people outside of my circle, and started working on my online footprint. I was creative and updated my experience that aligned with my future goals in a way that increased my chances for an interview. I also connected with my contacts to let them know I was looking for a job. And lastly, before we get started, I made sure to apply to jobs that I was 80% perfect for. That's right, 80% perfect. That was difficult for me at first. However, it paid off. Men usually apply to jobs that they are interested in, regardless if they meet all the requirements or not. And women should also, too, apply to jobs that we are passionate about. Remember, there is a ton of training that a new company will require and offer, regardless if you're perfect for the position or not. You'll still need to be trained. So today I'm going to be talking through the importance of telling your career story through your LinkedIn profile. And I hope you'll be able to walk away with a few ideas. So what is social selling? Social selling is about leveraging your social networks to attract the right prospects and build trusted relationships. When you leverage social selling, you attract the people who understand you, that have similar goals to you, and that want to be part of your tribe. In order to build a community, you really need to first create a network of like-minded individuals in your field and work on connecting. This is a numbers game, but it is also a chance to really get to know other people, to branch out and to open up to new possibilities. So let's talk women and LinkedIn. LinkedIn is underutilized by women. Women's networks are smaller than their male counterparts. Women are more likely to have shorter profile summaries and women on average include 11% less skills than men on their profiles. So prioritizing time for oneself is a difficult task. I understand that, but given that LinkedIn is such a powerful channel and tool, I'm hoping that I can inspire you all to take action and take the time needed to network yourself. Let me ask you a question. When was the last time you updated your profile? Do you even have a profile, right? When was the last time you liked a comment or posted an interesting article? When was the last time you proactively invited somebody to connect with you? Have you ever asked for a recommendation? The point is in order for LinkedIn to work for you, you must invest in it. And LinkedIn should be an essential, essential tool in your toolbox uh, in order for you to maximize your resume and your career online. So let's get to know LinkedIn a bit more and how it sits within the digital ecosystem. There are roughly 675 million members on LinkedIn. And to also put it very simply, LinkedIn has a new member sign on and join every two seconds. There are millions and millions of jobs at any one period of time, <clears throat> excuse me, for job seekers to find. There are roughly 50,000 skills, not to mention there are roughly 100,000 schools listed 
and over 280 billion pieces of individual content that is consumed on the feed every year. So I hope this gives you an idea of the size and scale of LinkedIn and the power of LinkedIn as a platform. <clears throat> Following is some additional data when it comes to women in LinkedIn that I thought was relevant to this topic today. A few points to highlight here is although women have earned more college degrees than men, women remain underrepresented at every level in corporate America. Also, women tend to promote themselves and their successes less than men. Uh, but, you know, we can do something to change this specific statistic today. I'd love for you all to make a note and take the time after you listen to this um, after you listen to this presentation and go to your profile page and promote your successes. We all need to be comfortable being our own cheerleaders. We need to be comfortable talking about the specifics we've impacted. So what holds women back? Following are the top five behaviors that halt progress. Like I mentioned before, women are reluctant to claim achievements. We have to do better and be uncomfortable until we are comfortable. Women also expect others, for the most part, to notice and reward their contributions. So again, we're not speaking up on our behalf, and that's something that we need to do better with. Just building is not enough. We have to build and leverage relationships. Those go hand in hand. And failing to enlist allies from day one is a huge mistake. Again, it is very uncomfortable putting yourself out there, I understand, but you are already taking the steps needed. And remember, it doesn't matter how slow you go, just as long as you keep on moving forward, do not stop. Above all, make sure to leverage the relationships you make. And when you are secure, please make sure to offer yourself up to the next woman and even man and give them the support and guidance you wish you had when starting off. Now let's discuss how to update your profile so you can network professionally and attack any opportunity within your professional world now or into the future. Your profile is the foundation of how you want to represent yourself online. Before somebody contacts you, they'll go through your profile, review your professional achievements, for example, they'll look over your contacts and look for any mutual contacts, perhaps, and try to get to know you before contacting you. Your profile sets the stage and is your first impression. The first step to updating or creating a profile is with a great photo. A profile photo is very important. As you can see, members with a photo get up to nine times more connection requests, 21 times more profile views, and 36 times more messages. Uh, so let's learn the do's and don'ts in regards to how to choose a profile photo. Now, I know there's a lot on this slide, but a few important takeaways that I think are non-negotiables are to use a photo with only you in it. Your photo should be a headshot, that means torso up. Also, make sure to use a photo that represents your authentic self. If you're a smiler, make sure you smile, and if you're not, don't. If possible, have a friend take the photo and use your best judgment on your attire. It's always best to be overdressed than underdressed, of course. But based on your industry, if you're more creative and artistic, you know, it is okay not to wear a blazer as the example. Things to avoid are group photos, vacation photos, although I'm sure you're lovely in a ton of vacation photos, you know, make sure to use something more professional. Cropped photos are a big no-no and selfies, you get the idea. So industry, be discovered. What does that mean exactly? This goes back to the slide I shared earlier. In order for people to find you, 
and for you to reach out to others, industry mapping helps LinkedIn connect you to the right type of people and vice versa. So it's really important to choose and update your industry based on your current needs or future needs. So be mindful of that. If you're wanting to change industry, make sure to update your industry information, uh, information according to what you're looking for um, is very, very important. As you can see, members who have updated their industry information uh, receive up to nine times more profile views. Also more than 300,000 people search by industry every single week, which includes recruiters and headhunters and HR representatives. And in order for them all to find you, your information needs to be current. What recruiters and headhunters will do is they will search a specific territory or city perhaps and um, search in industry and literally start looking through people who number one are open to looking for a job and then number two search your accomplishments etc to be able to then possibly contact you so it's very important to have this information to be current. So how can you introduce yourself and your accomplishments? Think of the summary section as your elevator pitch. If you've had one or two minutes, if you are able to get the opportunity to have one or two minutes to pitch yourself and your accomplishments to someone, this is where that summary would go. If you don't know where to start, sometimes it's best to ask yourself, what can I do for others? Think about who you are what you do, what you want to do, and how you bring value to others in your professional world. This is a place to set the record straight. And if you don't want to be defined by your current role, you could easily discuss your past achievements or future goals as well. It's really important to have more than 40 words. Uh, this is an algorithm that LinkedIn uses, which is why I'm notating that because this is a story about you and the introduction to your story is important and should be well-defined. Most importantly, you have to remember people want to read your story, so tell it. Things to avoid would be stretching the truth, unimpactful tidbits of information, possible rambling or whatnot, so make sure that it's clean and precise and past accomplishments that don't line up to what you're currently looking for should be left out as well. The summary is your chance to focus on you. You're the best person to introduce and highlight your contributions, so don't be shy and take pride. This is really your chance to be boastful. I know this summary might be uh, a little bit of a difficult task, especially if you haven't updated it in a while or perhaps you don't have a profile yet. Uh, you might be thinking to yourself, where should I start? How, how should I begin to, to clean, clean your summary up? And that's okay. Uh, there are so many examples online if you're stuck. Um, you can also look at your contacts and or review other successful people within your industry to draw inspiration, um, you know, to help you outline what you would like to say perhaps. But be mindful, be authentic, be yourself, and draw inspiration, but don't, don't use their information um, is really important. Okay, now, dealing your, detailing your work experience, especially when you are actively seeking a job, is important. For one, when you apply to jobs via LinkedIn, you can sync your profile to your job as your resume. Also, you can set your profile to actively seek opportunities. I would suggest always keeping your actively seeking opportunities turned on for a numerous amount of reasons. Number one, you always want to understand what's going on within the industry. You want to still be able to have those conversations with recruiters and HR individuals. You never know when your next fantastic opportunity is out there. And if you're not looking, then people aren't looking for you. So make sure to always set your profile to actively seeking. And then that lets recru recruiters and hen hunters know that you're at least interested at the possibility of having a discussion. So make sure that that information is updated. 
And what you need to do is to ask yourself, what have, I, what have I done in my role to make a difference for my clients or my organization? Um, and then take a closer look at how you answer that question re when reviewing this section. Structure, structuring the information can be done in several ways. I'm sure you've used bullet points in the past or sentences, not a problem. Either way, be confident and showcase your impact and results. Using statistics, I would say, is really important. For example, it would be really good to know you exceeded your goals, but the conversation changes when you mention you exceeded your goals by 120%. Another example I'd like to offer is it would be great to say how you're an advocate for your customers and you help them and, and whatnot, but it would be even better to mention how you helped with percentages or dollar amounts, for instance, statistics. Being able to measure success showcases your proficiency and ability to excel in your prior roles. Thus, this gives any new employer an opportunity of how well you'll be able to exceed their expectations when you're hired. So the statistics of an updated profile receives eight times more profile reviews. Uh, and when you're looking for a job, you need as many people looking and reviewing your profile as you are sending out your resume and filling out applications. So how can you bring your work to life and add some color to the bullet points and sentences of your experience? This is a good place to link your profile to external sites. Note a project from previous stages in your career or current stages in your career, perhaps. Something that's visually appealing. Maybe a blog post you wrote in the past. You can upload photos and presentations and videos. Of course, if your career doesn't pertain to this section, then go ahead and move on to the next. But if it does, this is really where you want, this is really where your future employers will want you to put examples. And to be clear, your competition will be updating their content. So you need to be sure to at least do the same. And if possible, and it is possible to do better. So again, do your research, look for what other people are posting, and try to do better. Think of, think of ways that would um, benefit uh, yourself by this section. This is a spot on your profile that's best for careers as example of maybe programming, web development, web design, marketing, advertising perhaps, uh, maybe you're a teacher, um, speech language pathologist, something along these lines. Um, but I encourage you all to look through all of the sections of your profile to be sure you are personalizing it based on your needs. Don't just fill things out to fill things out, right? Be, be mindful of what you're looking for and, and do the best you're able. So skills and endorsement is a place on your profile that claims your expertise, right? Simple enough. Again, LinkedIn is all about numbers and algorithms. So we know that members who add five or more skills receive up to 17 times more profile views, which is phenomenal. Regardless if you're looking for a job or not, you still want people and organizations to view your profile. So you should also know typical skills and less conventional descriptors and interests uh, that are appropriate for this environment. Uh, once you add a skill, you are then able to ask for endorsements, which is the fun part. And the more endorsements you're able to give others, the more likely the same people will endorse you. This section really gets you interacting with the network, which I like. As you, can, as you use LinkedIn, the site will start to recommend people to connect with. And this section is one of the places that LinkedIn uses algorithms like shared skills, perhaps, to connect people together and bring value to both parties. So when LinkedIn recommends people to connect with, go ahead, don't be shy. Don't be nervous that the other person doesn't know you. This is your opportunity to get to know other people. And if LinkedIn is recommending it, then go ahead and click connect and get the Recommendations help build credibility and validate your skills. So this section is literally the most underutilized in my opinion. People want to see what others think about you. 
We no longer need to ask somebody to write a letter of recommendation or a reference letter because now it can be stored on your profile. Um, so a great place to start is to ask a colleague or a leader, um, maybe a friend that you work with in a professional organization for an endorsement. Also, this is also your opportunity to scratch somebody else's back. Take five minutes to think about how someone else has helped you in your career or helped you with a project and write a recommendation. This is a place to really show up for one another on LinkedIn. And what's even better, showing up when we weren't even asked to. It really goes um, a long way to, to do this for somebody. And usually in return, the people will do that for you as well. So great place. So your professional community is an interesting topic I wanted to touch on. Are you part of a professional community? And what I mean by that is, do you take part in any organizations or nonprofits, maybe an association perhaps, and or meet up with face-to-face -face gatherings? Regardless of where you live, the level of your job or the length of your career or personal obligations, for example, you should be actively participating in at least one professional community. So why? Because actively belonging to a professional community yields measurable benefits, right? Again, it's a numbers game. We really want to take advantage of everything that LinkedIn is able to provide. So people with more real life connections have more successful careers. So since their network helps them with information and support that provide career and business opportunities, if you're not part of a excuse me, if you're not part of a professional community, go ahead and search LinkedIn and start seeking to join a few local groups and chapters within your your county or city, um, maybe your local district, perhaps. And remember, it's not about meeting everyone. It's about meeting the right people. Designing a strategic network is all about quality versus quantity and connections versus followers. If you can build a network with mutual benefit, you'll be able to curate where you want to go. After all, social selling is about leveraging your social networks to attract the right prospects and build trusted relationships. So that concludes our presentation. But before I go, I just wanted to thank Dress for Success for the opportunity, the Experian team that helped organize and host this virtual seminar, and all of you beautiful women. It was really definitely my pleasure to host. Good luck on your next adventure and take care. Bye-bye.